we, we're living in a world that is so polarized where everything is black and white, um, where we think that, uh, uh, you know, if I'm right, you must be wrong. Um, and the reality is the world is very gray. Um, the world is not black and white, uh, you know, and, and very often there is no right or wrong, very often. Um, uh, and so, and I think if you look at our politicians, you know, I, I think we're quick to blame our politicians, but I think our politicians are a reflection of us. I think, quite frankly, you know, if we're worried that, that, the, that the world is polarized and our politicians are dividing us, I think that's us. You know, we complain that they don't listen. We complain that they judge. We complain that, you know, uh, they, they pit one group against another for personal gain. Well, that's kind of what we've been doing for, for years, you know, and they pretend to be like us so they can get elected. So I think if, if we're disgusted by the states of our nations and we're disgusted and disappointed by how polarized we are, and almost everyone is, and by the way, Google doesn't help because the algorithm attempts to show you things that it thinks you want to see. So if you lean one political direction and you really care about finding what the balanced truth is, whatever you Google will show you your political leaning and, 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 and the opposite for, for the other side. So, uh, uh, you know, I think it starts at home. I think we all as individuals have to do a better job of listening. We have to learn to be less judgmental. We have to accept that, that, that two people can be right or at least try to understand where they come from uh, uh, and understand that, that there's a reason for, you know, nobody thinks, they're, no, nobody, when we keep calling other groups evil, nobody thinks they're evil. Everybody thinks they're on the side of good, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Um, uh, and to try and understand what that means to, and get to the root is where you find common ground. You know, I'm very proud of, a, a, there's one particular friendship I have with, um, uh, uh, with a friend in here, and we are on polar dip opposite sides of the political spectrum. And we have very different beliefs about a lot of things in the world. Mm -hmm. But we completely love each other and care about each other because at the end of the day, we share a lot of the same values and we're interested in each other and we learn from each other and we ask each other hard questions and we listen as opposed to trying to be right and convince the other person that they're wrong. And let me be clear, those conversations are difficult. Yeah. You know, when people say things that trigger you and for you to react with curiosity rather than anger, or to call somebody or, or, or to show interest in their point of view and understand it rather than tell them that they're wrong or stupid. You know, I mean, that takes a lot of hard work. And, and let's be honest, they don't teach us those skills at school. We don't learn, their, learn their, schools, their skills at work. So where are we learning those skills? You know, we have to learn those skills. And quite frankly, I think companies should teach those skills. Companies should teach listening and effective confrontation and how to have difficult conversations and how to give and receive feedback. Because not only will it help us at work, because all of those things matter at work, but it'll actually help us be better human beings. So believe it or not, I actually think business could be the solution to the problems we have in our world because our government's not gonna teach us those skills. Our schools aren't teaching us those skills. People aren't taking it upon themselves to learn those skills. But if we have to learn those skills at work, well, guess what? Those skills get used every, in, in, in all aspects of our lives and eventually we'll get politicians that reflect that as well.